Hello, my name is Aparna. In this video, we will explore how ethnographic practices can be applied in digital spaces to understand users. This discussion will be focused within the discipline of design thinking. My background is in anthropology and I'm currently mastering digital experience design at Hyper Island, UK. In some of our project work here, we have resorted to digital spaces for user research, mostly due to time restrictions, geographical challenges, or difficulty in finding niche users. In one particular case, we were designing for people with a specific hidden neurological challenge, and it was only diagnosed about seven years ago. So it's close to impossible to find such people through personal networks. We stumbled upon an online community of these users. There we learned so much about their lived experiences in a span of few hours and it would have taken us months to get that kind of information from in-person interviews. As research gets more niche, digital spaces can open up a whole new world of possibilities to access users. Now, before we get into it, let's understand what ethnography is and why it's useful in the design research process. For design inspiration, you can't know too much about people. So the, the, the benefit of taking the ethnographic, ethnographic approach and really looking at a person and their lives and how they're behaving is you never know where the inspiration is going to come from. It might be exactly where you're looking for it, or it might be in another behavior or another interaction. And for me, that's why ethnography is a really important design tool. Michael Burovoy defines ethnography as the study of people in their own time and space, in their own everyday lives. Ethnography has its roots in anthropology and has been traditionally used to study physical spaces. In today's cyber era, the lines between our physical and virtual worlds are blurry, especially in the ways in which we express ourselves and interact with each other. As design researchers, it is becoming more and more important to consider online spaces as another level or site where our users live. Here are the basics of doing ethnography in digital spaces. Step one is to decide if ethnography is the right approach for your project. According to John Cresswell, ethnography is appropriate if the needs are to describe how a cultural group works and to explore their beliefs, language, behaviors, or issues that they face. That means it is most relevant at the discover phase of the double diamond or the starting phase of a design thinking process. Step two is to define the type of user and to locate online communities where they interact. A basic online search using keywords should get you started with some information. It might be necessary to try a few different word combinations that describe your user. There are many types of communities that can be found online. In their ethnographical studies, Ronald Hallett looked at information uh, published on Facebook and Kristen Barber drew on information from Yelp and enterprise websites to do their user research. When we research people with neurological challenges with, uh, around navigation, we looked through exclusive forums that required a sign-up process. Based on the barriers to entry, online user communities can be loosely categorized into three, public, semi-private, and private. Some examples of public communities are Twitter, Yelp, review forums that are freely accessible by anyone. Examples of semi-private communities are Facebook walls of individuals, Facebook groups, and mailing lists, etc. that require some form of uh, entry and where your identity is visible. Examples of private communities are Reddit, web or web forums that allow you to participate after a verification process and where you have the option to remain anonymous. Now, each of these categories represent a different level of sensitivity and demand different rigors of ethical behavior. Now, none of these are hard and fast rules. Please use your own judgment when entering these communities and be respectful of their code of conduct. Step three is about entering and gaining trust. A public community can be accessed with the ease of a click. To access semi-private and private communities, respectfully request entry 
by sharing information about yourself and stating your purpose of being there. Researchers Hesse Weiber and Griffin say that it is an ethical issue for online researchers to properly inform individuals that their involvement in an online community may subject them to online research. However, the researchers are still debating as to at what point they should share information on this. Sometimes they take some time to get a feel for the interaction before they are able to come up with the appropriate questions. The bottom line is that this works much like it does in the physical world. Um, when meeting a new group of strangers or friends, you know, we, we don't just go in and ask questions. We, say, we introduce ourselves at, at the appropriate time. Step four is about observing patterns and gathering insights. When you enter a physical space, you are able to experience the present and maybe see some artifacts that tell you a story about the past. In contrast to this, a digital space allows you to observe how the community has evolved and interacted over time. Do stay mindful of your own assumptions. This will reduce the risk of egocentric empathy gap, which could result in skipping insights. This particular cognitive bias refers to our tendency to overestimate the similarity between what we value and what the user values. At this point, we will look at how the information uh, observed so far can be translated into a cultural portrait. So step five is to draw a basic cultural portrait of the user. One great tool that helps in codifying this information is Gerd Hofstede's Cultural Onion. This also helps you visualize what some of the unifying features of the community are and what you need to look for. The link to Hofstede's Cultural Onion model is attached below. Um, now, after you do this, you may not have information in all of the different layers and that is completely okay. This is just a starting point for you to visualize what you know about the community. And there's a great tool to share it as well. You're now ready to start participating in the community, but that is a topic to be covered in another video. Let's do a quick summary. Step one, decide if ethnography is the right approach. Step two, define users and locate online communities. Step three, request entry and gain trust. Step four, observe patterns and gain insights. Step five, draw a cultural portrait. By following these steps, you know how to find a community and to gain some insights to prepare for a deeper interaction. It is important to highlight here that nothing can really replace face-to-face -face interaction and immersive experiences in the physical site. A recommended way to use digital ethnography is to gain contextual knowledge and use it as a pathway to reach out to users who can validate findings and provide feedback on your prototypes. Congratulations, you now know the basics of doing ethnography in digital spaces. Now, put your hand right in front of you, bend it like this and give yourself a pat on the back. Well done. This is the first time I'm trying to do a video like this, so I would love to hear what you thought. Thanks for watching and let me know your comments in, in the comment section below. Till next time.